Welcome back to our Weasley clock build. Hopefully you've already seen the first video where we took apart the clock. If not, go and look in our channel and you can watch that now. But when we took it apart, we found the original mechanism is held to the metal plate that holds the front of the clock face by these three pillars here. You can see them much closer here. So what we need to do, and what we're gonna show you in this video, is design a mount for our servo, because we're gonna use a servo that can turn 360 degrees for our clock face. So we're gonna show you how we designed, printed that, and fitted it to the clock face. So this is the part I made for the servo mount. Uh, it's relatively straightforward. I use SketchUp for doing this. So I measured uh, on the back of the clock the kind of three pillars, and I used that to work out um, what I needed here. So you can kind of see, I used these three circles to start with knowing where the pillars are, knowing how where the, far they were apart. I used a quick uh, triangle solver on the internet um, to measure the shapes and then know what the angle should be. So I drew that out to start with, then I kind of drew an outline around it pretty roughly just to give enough space between the edge and the hole. Um, uh, and then I cut a hole for the servo in it. And I did this all while it was flat. Uh, and then using SketchUp's uh, extrude tool here, I took the face and then stretched it up. When I first did this, um, I didn't have these two blocks here that you can see these two kind of uh, bits raised up at either end. Uh, and when I actually fitted the first print of this into the clock, I found that the servo was just too far back from the clock face and was gonna stick out the back of the case. So I've just added these two little mounts in here so they bring the servo a bit up, so the servo will be across here. Um, I could have tried to measure exactly where the screw holes on the servo go, um, but to be honest, I couldn't be bothered, so I'm just gonna screw into it, even though, as you'll see in a moment, it be 3D printed, it will have a hollow structure inside, it will still hold it on foam. Uh, so that was in SketchUp, once I'd done that, uh, I've got SketchUp plugin that just exports out um, an STL file, which is what 3D printers use. Uh, and then using my new uh, Rovox 3D printer, um, it uses this software called Automaker, which is their own proprietary software for printing and for um, working out all the layers that it prints, slicing. Um, and you just come into this, you add a model. There you go. Uh, and you can see to start with, it's got it upside down. So I just need to rotate it around. And I can never remember which one of these it is. Not that one. Not that one. I'll get it in the end. There you go. Um, so it's rotated it around and just to make sure, I don't think it is flat on the printer there. So you can press this lay flat button and it will make sure that it is definitely flat to the floor. Uh, so that's how you can do it in there, and then I just printed it, um, as you'll see in the video, and you can see it here. It printed in about half an hour, um, and then fitted perfectly, um, which was really good, first time. So here you can see from our build video that will come later on, i starting to put it together, and you can see as you turn it over, it fits nicely on those three bits there. So that's all for now, thank you for watching. Make sure you subscribe. The next video will be showing you how we actually program the Weezy clock and what microprocessor we used. So check back soon. We'll see you then. Bye.